She comes from Silver Spoon, Golden Rule, private school, never miss Sunday church. I come from Blue Collar, Old Dollar, out there where concrete meets Old Red Dirt. How are we going to touch our knees together? Well, if you want to. <laughs> I won't tell if you won't. I won't tell. <laughs> don't, don't tell me. Don't ask, don't tell. That was the Army's policy, but now it's, uh, it's very different. <laughs> Have you seen the new Navy recruitment uh, program that they were doing? No. It was, it was ridiculous. It was basically they were uh, promoting uh, drag shows with members of the Navy. Like, there was this, not a soldier, a sailor that was openly LGBTQ plus X dollar sign hashtag something. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, he, uh, he's a part of the, he's part of the Navy, but he does drag and they were thinking it might be a, a, a recruitment opportunity to send him to places to, uh, try and bolster their recruitment numbers because right now in today's day and age uh, our recruitment numbers across every branch of the military is down tremendously and I wonder why <laughs> well we hear we hear about it a lot where guys are leaving the military be, because they're fed up of, with the f politics and it's not like it used to be no the military is supposed to be a unified fighting force it's not supposed to be, you know, <laughs> everyone's, everyone's an individual. You're not an individual when you're in the military. You are part of a singular unit yeah. towards one singular goal. So you have to conform and you lose your individuality for the sake of the greater purpose and the greater organization. And they're getting away from that and then politics gets involved because when you bring in individuality, then everybody wants their say with everything and then they bring their politics into it and then that just snowballs so yeah that's just I, me <clears throat> I don't know why we start talking about that I don't know either <laughs> uh, but um, you know speaking of military mm -hmm. we've been seeing a lot of cool World Wars 2 stuff through the shop yeah we had uh, Jack Mr. Jack came by and uh, he had dropped off his M1 carbine and he was looking for an original bayonet Right, yeah, and we were trying to source that for him, and we found one that fits on. And you, we had, he had brought in one before, but the uh, the clamping mechanism to whenever you put it over the end of the barrel, it was like too big. It wasn't like clamping. Well, on it. is that what it was? If you looked at the stamp on there, it said "Made in China," so <laughs> that mind. wasn't made for that M1 carbine for sure. So what we got on eBay, and we looked up, found one. Or an original one. It was about seven hundred and fifty bucks. But it was it was an original from yep. World War Two. Yep. Yeah. And uh, but we got it ordered for him, and he was dude. Dude, he was ecstatic. Isn't that awesome, He's, man? This this older gentleman, uh, Vietnam uh, veteran. He's, and he was in the Air Force. He flew B fifty twos. Yep. And this dude. This dude is incredible. He's got story after story, story after. after story. But I love hearing But the they're amazing stories. Like, yeah, I agree. I don't know. I'm a sucker for a good story. But then he also gave us a gift. Um, we have an artillery shell now <laughs> in our shop. Yeah, it's it's actually even stamped the year. 1945. 1945. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see yeah, it. Yeah, right there. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. And he gave it to us because he was saying that he wants to honor veterans and he wants us to clean it up. And then for any one of our veteran customers that comes in that does anything with us, that does any work or get any works done, we can engrave their name on the artillery shell. And we'll oh, have it right here that? in the shop. This thing's heavy too. I mean, this is... It's a 90 shot. millimeter artillery shell. So what was this <laughs> fired from, Ryan? It was either fired from a field artillery piece uh, during the Vietnam War or World War II or it was fired from a warship. And I don't know exactly which one because Mr. Jack didn't tell us, but... <laughs> well, we're gonna, we're gonna have to remember to ask. Him. We're gonna have to remember to ask him, but it was either one of those two. And this thing is so cool, man. Just imagine getting hit with that thing. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's heavy. 
pretty insane. But that's that was really cool. And, you know, we have a lot of really cool customers. And I'm so happy that we have some really cool people that come by. And then we have people like y'all that watch the videos yeah, that man. give us, like, cool comments. And I think we have some comments that we wanted to go through. If yeah, we talked about it in the last podcast that, up. you know, um, we wanted to go through the comments. But as we started going through them, um, you know, we started seeing some not so favorable favorable stuff that we necessarily wanted to repeat but well yeah you know what i i think whether it's good or bad i think we should go through like the top well my thing is 15. like you know like constructive criticism is always good but when you just have people that are just you know whining just the whine go yeah. crying to a pillow yeah or something <laughs> yeah. um but like you know danny g man is like one of our one of our guys, he comments on all of our videos too. He says, this video paint job, underrated AF, can't say the you know thing because YouTube. Uh, beautiful work by the King of Camo. And he was talking about uh, what you did with your Borderlands themed uh, scar that you did, which was amazing. Yeah. If we can put a, if you can put a picture up of it, that'd be cool. If I remember to do if that. If you remember to do it. <laughs> but I'll try. That was really cool. Um, let's see, what are some other ones that we got right here? Oh, from Range Day this past weekend, we met uh, Frigerator. Frigerator. Strap House Customs. Man, Shout out on cool the channel. Dude. He was cool, man. Uh, when he introduced himself to us and he said, what's up, my name's Frigerator. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh, man, because like, he fits that description of well, the name. He's, like, a, he's built he's a like a fridge. He's a big dude. <laughs> you know, I'm like, a, he's a big dude. And, um, like, bro, you play fullback in <laughs> for college or something? Yeah, he was cool, and I got to see him shooting up on the line. He was having fun, and um, he uh, he gave us a follow here on uh, YouTube. So and he's watching our videos. I gave so him a follow shout back, out, homie. Yeah, man, refrigerator, <laughs> awesome. Who else? Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh my, <laughs> Bobby at Dega Boys. Oh yeah, Bobby, Bobby. with Dega Boys. Uh, shouting us out and uh, getting on us and saying that he supports us and he says don't worry about those haters man you just keep rocking on and rocking with it if you haven't seen the Dega Boys channel if you like racing there's no better in-depth analysis channel they cover so much stuff yeah they, they cover actual racing like NASCAR and they, co and they cover sim racing sim racing NASCAR but not just that they cover like the the Grand Prix they cover Le Mans they cover what's there's a race in Dubai I think like isn't it this weekend or something like that or coming up um it's like a like a pre in like Dubai or something yeah like that. I think it's the is it the Grand Prix I don't the I don't one Grand Prix I, Formula One racing don't call me out on racing I'm calling, stuff I'm calling while we're out. talking about Bobby man <laughs> um yeah I actually I was just on there uh the other night uh, they were doing a broadcast, and I That's uh, cool. I was like, I love oval racing. <laughs> I love oval racing. <laughs> and uh, and Bobby and Bobby was like, Oh, the King of Camo's in here. <laughs> that was cool. So check yeah. those guys out. The it's the Dega, the Dega Boys. Boys on the Dega YouTube. Boys on YouTube. They're cool, man. Um, they're good, good bros and supporters of ours, and we love Bobby. Oh man! And then we got another one from your your buddy uh, Blondie. Blondie's saying, and why didn't I get a phone call or a text about the uh, Range Day event? And he's like, <laughs> yeah. what the hell, man? That I know. My feelings. He didn't just post a comment. I got a follow-up phone call. They called you. <laughs> he he, was he like, called what? me. You know, <laughs> it, it, it oftentimes happens where I um, have a customer that's uh, not just a good customer, but becomes a good friend. Oh, yeah. And um, and Blondie, Blondie is one of those guys, man. And... Uh, uh, Blondie has been going through a, a rough go of things lately, and um, anyway, if you uh, if you guys out there want to send Blondie some positive love, yeah, man, he uh, he definitely could use it, and uh, he's he's a good bro. Yeah, man. Uh, well, but he was pre appreciate the comment, and I, and I know I, you know I I I just don't know. Uh, it, it's tough because we only have so many slots we can fill I know. at range day. We we try and we, we want to bring certain we people. Wanna bring, we, we want to bring, 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 bring we want to bring a lot of people. We want to bring a lot of people, but um, it's just you know we try to we try to get it you know set up to where we get everyone that we can get there to get as much content as we can. And if you haven't seen our our video for range day, go check it out. Nate is going to edit the video. He needs to link it somewhere over here. Down I don't, below. I don't think I can do that. Just ask Sean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you haven't seen our Wednesday video, 
It is an awesome time. And then also go check out Sean and Skyler with Conservative Guns and Armor. They have their video too. They were there with us. You know, yeah, we, we've we've been shouting them out, oh, out yeah. a lot here on the channel, and it's really because there are a couple of cool bros doing um, really neat reviews. Uh, they keep it fun and um, funny and uh, lighthearted and entertaining, but informational. Yeah. And uh, these guys really know what they're talking about. I mean, they're, they spend their day um, working around guns all day long at a gun store, and um, and then they make YouTube videos uh, in, in their spare time. But uh, their channel has really grown in in the last um, you know six months. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the last six months, they they've skyrocketed in well, subscribers. Well, I mean, they're, they're blowing up because they, they get really good content. They're very consistent with their content. We're trying to get on that same level with consistency and getting you guys as much content with what we have going on here at the shop and our events and just really cool, fun, exciting things that we have going on. And we love those guys because they are usually out with us, you know, and, and uh, are a part of the team and they get to really help us out. And it's really fun to go and do stuff with them. So we love shouting them out. But on top of that, you know, I know we got some more comments, but range day, man, that was a fun time. That was awesome. I had so much fun. We had, um, we had an amazing time, but not just that. We met a bunch of amazing people. And, oh, my um, gosh. There's so many great people that we met there. I mean, the guys from... SAR USA. Curated Arms. Curated Arms. Curated Arms. That's that's another one we need to talk about real quick. Oh, yeah. They're actually right down the road from us in Woodstock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in Woodstock? I thought they were in Alpharetta. I think they're Woodstock, Alpharetta area. I'm not entirely sure exactly okay. where. Woodstock, Alpharetta-ish area. <laughs> area. So not far from us. But Wesley with Curated Arms. Yeah, Wesley over there at Curated Arms. Man, he's doing some cool stuff. Go check out their channel. Check out their Instagram. Um, they're 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 doing some sexy builds, functional but beautiful. And it's really uh, cool. I'm I'm hoping we can do some work together with them. Well, yeah, I mean they're they're right down the road, so it's it'll be cool to just get with them, and they can come to see our shop. And we already have plans for them to come up and take a look at what we got. So maybe do some collaborations on maybe some some cool work that we can do on some firearms because they got some really cool really neat design stuff because we got to handle a couple of their pistols at range day and he was was showing us like you know through all yeah, the different I mean, cool things that they have some with of those pistols. triggers some of the optics that they were showing us um they're they're a premier custom gun shop and they specialize in something very unique and uh it's not maybe it's not necessarily for everybody but um that's true but man what they do is super cool. I think well, they had super, some of the sexiest guns yeah. at range day. Well, yeah, because it's it's super detailed, right? Everything that they did was like really detailed out, and whether it was their slides with like the slide cuts, or it was like you said with the optics, like they had really cool eye relief. I just think it was an awesome time to go up there and meet him and talk with him about some cool stuff. Um, but just with everything else, I mean, that's what range day is mainly for, right? Is networking shooting and getting to meet a lot of really cool people in the industry that want to help support each other and i think it's i think it's uh, a really fun event and i can't wait to go back next year but uh i just i couldn't believe it with all the people that we had out there i think there was like what was it close to like five or six hundred well, people there I, on saturday well i think there were 500 yeah 500 it's it's even between five and six on yeah, Saturday were, with like, were, all the content creators <clears throat> and everybody out there too. Yeah, man, and it was cool. We got to meet uh, Mr. Guns and Gear. Yep. Um, Twenty Two Plankster was there. We got Plankster. to meet him. Um, uh, Brass Bandicoot was there. He brought by uh, his uh, Desert Eagle that Nate did up in a donut theme, the Donut Eagle. Uh, so he was yep. there. Uh, Ruben. Uh, Ruben over at Damage Control Customs was there. We Damage got to Control Customs. That's another really cool uh, YouTube channel for any of you Humvee guys. If oh, yeah. you're uh, if you're into Humvees and you need uh, some knowledge or you need something fixed, Ruben is your guy. That's for sure. Oh yeah, we get to play around in his Humvee a little bit. Got yeah. some cool pictures. Man, his <laughs> Humvee is stupid cool. I mean, he decked the thing out. It, it, it also has all the original equipment that the military removed. Oh yeah. When they sell it to, to the public. Mm -hmm. And 
he somehow acquired all that same gear and equipment and <laughs> somehow reassemb- acquired reassembled it <laughs> and man and it all functions yeah he's got the turret which was awesome because he decked out back cave ballistics humvee yeah which if you've seen our youtube video it's the same humvee that eric went out with the two a boys yeah those little awesome badasses <laughs> yeah God, the two A boys. He was eight years old, and he was driving the Humvee. He might back it around in the field and got Eric on. You know, oh my yeah, God. we're on definitely party. gonna have to put footage of that. Oh up, my dude. gosh, that was Man, awesome. Those two kids are back. <laughs> an example. Oh yeah. Uh, of what young men are. I mean, they were so poised. They were respectful. They were so mature for their age. They had great weapons discipline and etiquette. I mean. Unreal. I was shocked. I'm like, this dude's like eight years old. Yeah. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> if you don't already follow the two A boys, you should definitely follow yeah. them. They, they, Give them a follow. They are absolutely incredible. They're uh, stunning. They're. That's all I. <laughs> that's the only word I could come up with. I was. They're like, pretty great. Yeah. They're I, awesome. I'm. You know, I'm a 40 year old who's a fan of an eight year old. <laughs> Uh, every time he walked by, I was uh, trying to give him Give a fist bump. Like, yeah, dude? like, dude, what, dude? Um, he was incredible. Yeah, man. And uh, their parents, of course, we got to meet them. Yeah, we got to meet their mom. Really their mom nice and dad. people, and um, you can just tell that the, they've got a, they've got it down, man. They're raising their kids the right way. They are. I mean, just super respectful. Couldn't couldn't get enough of watching them go out there and get on the line and shoot. Absolutely they were, awesome. I mean, that was awesome. They were so yeah, cool. Yeah, check out the 2A boys on Instagram. I don't know if they have a YouTube page yet. I don't know if they got YouTube. I know they have an Instagram page. Go check them out on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll link their... Uh, if you can find it, link, it, link it down I'll below. link their Instagram page in, in the description. Wow, this description... It's gonna have a gonna lot have of people. Have a lot of people. But we got a lot of people that were cool that we're talking about. Um, yeah, man. There was uh, there was what was it Friday night? I think was really cool because we got to get out there and they had guys uh, from I think it was MGT that brought out thermal and uh, night vision, and I uh, soloed uh, two guys in beer pong <laughs> <laughs> with night vision goggles on. Yeah. I'm not an alcoholic, I promise. Um, but um, let's be honest, who is the master of beer pong? It's, it's definitely me. Brian. <laughs> I carried you in that game. No, in the first game, yeah, we played off each other, but when you left me uh, to go, I guess... I went to go watch the, 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 gel, the, the gel blasters. The gel blasters, which I did that after. Um, I had two other guys come up, and they were awesome guys, but he's like, all right, hey, 2v1, and I was like, screw it, let's go. Yeah, that was a long game, too. It was. And I was I, I stayed with it though and came back and I was I was super proud of myself. One of the range officers uh, ended up winning the raffle uh, from yeah the, for the from thermals. the beer pong, yeah. uh, and the, and the raffle was a set of thermal uh, binoculars and they were so cool, man. They're really cool. They were so cool. If you look up to the sky with them, you could see absolutely everything. 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 You could see every cloud, every star, everything, and the stars. Like far away stars looked like the sun, you know, like it was insane. Uh, It was cool. And then, you know, they had the, uh, the gel blaster tag and they mm -hmm. put the thermal on the gel blaster M4 that they had. That was, that was pretty fun. I did make a little, a little silly, uh, mistake unknowingly, unknowingly. I had no idea. Um, What'd you do? (laughs) Well, I, I accidentally cut Flinkster 22 off while he was talking to Eric. Um, Wow. I didn't. Well, what I didn't, a jerk! I no, I swear <laughs> to God, I, I didn't even realize it. I really, I didn't even realize it. Um, Sean and Skyler had walked up, and I was talking to Eric, and they had walked up, so I like called them over so that I could introduce them oh, okay. to Eric. And in that time, um, uh, uh, Dave had walked up behind and <laughs> was talk was talking to Eric and. Um, I I didn't see him behind me, and there was so ma- so many people talking. Nate said, "Excuse me, sir," <clears throat> and, and I just went, "Oh, Eric," and I totally cut them. And and when I realized I cut him off, I was like, "Oh, sorry." And Eric was like, "No, that's fine." And I, I was like, "Ah," oh. I just wanted to introduce you to uh, Eric and Skyler, and he was like, "Okay," and they had a little chit chat oh, and stuff. And then uh, 
I kind of apologized again, and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll let you guys mingle. Well, you that's know? okay. I mean, you, you got to talk to him the next day. I did, before, I did, and I got to out. apologize to him for that, and he was like, I don't even remember it. <laughs> um, he, was, he was so cool, too. I was like, man, I've been watching you for years on YouTube. He said, you remember what he said? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry, bro. Oh, man, that's funny. He, he was cool. I mean, there's just so many cool people. He's man. a lot taller in person. He is very tall. Yeah. Like, well, I'm 6'2". I mean, especially for a short dude. Yeah, you're short. But I'm 6'2", and he was, he was like, at least, like, three inches, four inches taller than me. Like, he was, like, here. Yeah. On me, like, standing up. And I was like, hey, Dave. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was really cool. Um, everybody there that we spoke to was really cool. I, I didn't have... Uh, a single negative moment there to speak no, of. No, I mean, everything was, was great. I mean, uh, well, shout, except and, for when Eric got upset. Oh, yeah. I mean, th there's always there's always that one guy or that one gal that... One person who that, doesn't listen that to just the doesn't safety listen to briefing. directions. And, you know, that's a big thing about safety. If, if the eight-year-old 2A boy can follow directions and do what he's supposed to do, and you're grown, a grown adult that is listening to the same instructions, and the eight-year-old can do it, but you can't, you might want to rethink you, what you got up in there because, I mean, he gave out simple instructions for the range and the range operations and what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Which, let's clarify and let's just let the viewers know, Eric had specifically instructed everyone at range day that if they were firing a rifle caliber or a rifle they are to fire it at the metal plates downrange down range, and not those at the very front. That were those, meant for pistols. Those at the very front were meant for pistols and pistol caliber guns. Yes. I mean, maybe not pistol caliber rifles, but pistols. And um, But if you if you have proper range etiquette, you understand what he's talking about. Yeah, of course. Because, it, of because safety. it's common sense because it's common of safety. sense and safety. Yeah. Because you have a, you had a guy on, on Saturday that I don't know that, who it was, I, but he we, was there, spotted for it sure. was either it was either the guy that shot it or the guy that was right next to him that there that might did have been it one or two people because they shot with uh, I think it was it was a rifle caliber I think it was like either a three oh eight or a five five six or something like that and hit one of the close up targets and that slag you know when it impacts the metal that slag flew back and. You know, hit somebody, hit somebody in the, somebody arm in the and arm, leg, and he's. I mean, it's not like a, a bullet wound, but you know, it, it scrapes you. It's gonna, it's gonna cut your skin, and you know, we, we want to make sure everyone is safe, and that's what Eric was trying to do. And Eric, you know, made everybody aware that this is what you're supposed to do when you fire on the range. Some people don't listen, and you know, then when you have people like that, it just puts everybody else at risk for something, you know, bad to happen. Luckily, he was. Everyone was totally fine. Just had a minor, a minor scrape on his arm. Yeah. But you know, it's just. And of course, they had all the proper paramedics and safety people. There oh yeah, they were great with all the proper. That, you know, that he was taken care. He was taken of care of immediately. Multiple medics on standby. <clears throat> paramedics were always there. They had the fire department there. You know, every every safety precaution was taken, and you know that that just speaks to the level of preparedness that Eric and Brandy have. Well, this is not events. their first rodeo. No, this was I the eleventh year doing yeah. this. Eleventh yeah. year. And it, it was uh, it was better than last year. Last year was amazing. It was our first time there. Yep. Uh, I thought it was even better. It was a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, there were more people there. There were a lot more variety of guns. I think there was. Uh, but if again, shout out to everybody that was there that we got to talk to and meet and make connections with. We're super excited for what the next full year has in store for us now. And we can't thank Eric and Brandy enough for inviting us. I mean, they are amazing people. Yeah. And it's an awesome opportunity. And we just can't wait to come back out next year. And hopefully in the future, uh, we'll be doing some more of Eric's guns. And yeah. maybe be going down and being on his channel too. And Well, we did talk about it like while that. we were there at Range Day. And he definitely wants to do another collaboration video he does. with us. So, um, yeah, we're, we're ready whenever he is. And uh, can't wait to get that call for sure. Um, you know, uh, some kind of not so awesome, uh, well, not necessarily not so awesome, but <laughs> disappointing news is that, um, unfortunately this year with just the way things went and timing, um, the, the motorcycle charity ride was actually uh -huh. supposed to take place 
today, today. <laughs> um, which is the 7th of October. But unfortunately, um, well, we, just due to time constraints and like yeah, getting, I getting think, people I, involved I just think that not ride. enough people knew about the event and we didn't have enough people sign up. So we've postponed it to yes. November 18th. It should be the, November the 18th. November so, 18th. Uh, the weekend after Veterans Day, that, that next Saturday. Yep. Um, so hopefully, uh, we just wanted to do that, like we said, you know, timing constraints with getting people, you know, to, to sign up for the ride because there was a lot of people that had conflicts that came up where they wouldn't be able to do the ride. And we had enough people come to us and say, hey, we, you know, we didn't know about it in time or, hey, we've already got conflicts, we already made plans. So we wanted to make sure that we could get enough people involved so we can have a really awesome ride like we did last year. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, what, is, uh, what is the other thing that we wanted to talk about? We wanted to talk about the bike ride going to November 18th, but then we also wanted to talk about next weekend, we are actually going to be at Old Town Cutlery. Oh, that's right. For Knifetoberfest. Yeah. So big event we do with Lee and Old Town every year. Uh, we've already talked about it, I think, multiple times, but if you are in the coming Georgia area or you're going to be over in this area next weekend, on Saturday, we will be at Old Town Cutlery on site with the laser. So if you want to go and purchase a knife, a karambit, a, a fighting knife, a sword, whatever, an axe, and you want to get it engraved, Nate will knock it out for you on site right then and there. Yep, and we can do... Anything from initials to a name to uh, a sentence to a logo or an elaborate pattern, really whatever you want. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's um, gonna be fun. They, it's gonna be they, fun. They always do all kinds of um, neat extracurricular uh, events at oh, yeah. Knifetoberfest. So they have spear throwing, spear throwing. axe throwing. Um, uh, Knife throwing knife throwing, cutting, cutting competition, competition. Uh, live forging demonstrations, yep. and then of course a bunch of local knife makers and um, as well as uh, knives for sale. And it's the coolest knife store in North Georgia. There's oh, no yeah. doubt. Hands down. Hands down. Uh, you got to check it out. And we've been affiliated with them for a long time. They've been great partners and supporters of us. And um, so we go out there once a year and uh, we set up the laser and we do live engraving, so definitely come check that out for come sure. Come check us out. It's going to be a fun time. We'll be there pretty much the entire afternoon until about, I think, 5 or 6 uh, in the afternoon. So you got plenty of enough time to come, hang out, get something to eat, and look at some cool demonstrations, maybe uh, win yourself a knife in the raffle that they usually yep. do every year. Yep. So we, we're, we're really excited. And we're still excited for the bike ride. Even though we couldn't do it to, uh, today, we're still excited because we have more people that are going to be able to actually sign up and be involved later on in November. Yeah. Well, so. in, in November 18th, it might also be a little bit cooler. Yeah. And uh, I know that some riders prefer the cooler weather, some riders prefer the warmer weather. Yeah, if you mean. But uh, hopefully we'll have some somewhat warmer weather then and yeah. it won't be freezing. Uh, cold and and we can have a cool ride uh, either way we're still gonna get together here at the shop and um, uh, gather here and and uh, have our raffle and yep. end the ride at nofo and uh, do like we normally do yep do like we normally do and we'll have it set up and uh, big shout out to nofo uh, with miss Bree over there she's their event coordinator and she's awesome we've already scheduled the date we're good for November 18th she has it set up so we can get there and uh, end the ride there and just have a great time. So, yeah, speaking of NOFO, we're going to be there tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> um, we'll be there tomorrow from uh, 12 until 6. 12 to, is it, wait, is it 2 to well, 6? Well, it's, oh, it's 2 to 6 for the actual market day. We'll be yeah. there a little bit early to set up, but it's 2, two to 6 for the actual market day. Yeah. 2 to 6 at NOFO Brewery in Cumming. And uh, yeah, we'll have a bunch of cool guns there. Mm -hmm. That's, and some merch. Yeah, we'll have some merch and we'll have maybe a cool couple of knives out there and just a few different things, but we'll definitely be showing off the uh, custom bills that we have so people can see it. Because this will be like the first big market day, like uh, come back into it. Because I don't think they've really done like uh, a big one. And this is their anniversary market day, so it's the biggest and one they do every year. And unfortunately, just because of uh, timing and stuff, we, we, 
we missed the last couple of market days, so it'll be right. nice to, to get back over there. Show up in force and show out. Yeah, so. that's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, good deal. Yeah, well, man. Uh, I, I think that's uh, that's all the update we have, right? Yeah, that's all the updates for what we got right now. Um, as far as the future, I think we covered everything that we're going to be doing. Um, don't forget about the classes. Yep. Next week, first class will start. Um, October if you have, 11th. October 11th, next Wednesday. It is the Escalation of Force yeah. and Use of Force use class. Use of Force class. So if you haven't already, if you're interested in it, you can always shoot us a message. Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but send it over to us. Message down in the comments like, hey, how do I sign up for classes? Nate, uh, the best way we'll, to sign up you know, for classes is to get you set up. Um, either go to directly to swordandshield.solutions or you can go to our website and we have a link down yep. there. Uh, up at the top left of our website, you'll see uh, events and classes. You'll click on that. And then you'll scroll down to the classes and um, click the link to um, sign up. And uh, we hope to see you there. We're, Ryan and I will be there. We'll um, be taking the classes. We'll be taking the classes. So um, that, that'll that be exciting. October 11th, that's next, Wednesday, next, next Wednesday. week. Yep. Yeah. So see you guys there. Cool. I'm excited. Let's go do some classes. I'm going to figure out how to escalate my force against you. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what to do. Oh. I'll just go for a double leg takedown. Double leg? Yeah. I figured you're just going to kick me in the nuts or something. No. I go for the double ta double leg takedown, then I pepper spray you and run. <laughs> the pepper spray? Yeah. Because you can't take my punch. Well, now we have to do a sparring match. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you later. And I don't know what happened, but it sure don't act up on paper. Close my eyes late at night, you can bet I make my